At the end of the 1970s, it did look like the price of oil was going to go beyond $40 a barrel, which it hit in 1980, and go on to $100 a barrel. It looked like the future could only get better and better and better forever. Well, as the saying goes, uh, things never go in one direction forever. And that's what happened here in Alberta in the 1980s. And a collision of different forces led to the almost complete collapse of the price of oil. Well, Alberta's oil patch that in the late 70s had grown accustomed to very high prices of oil, overexpanded, overgrew, uh, started doing very expensive things. And so when the price of oil, which was around $40 a barrel in 1980, just toppled in the mid 80s down to just less than $4 a barrel, so a tenfold drop, it really changed things a lot. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the National Energy Program. It was coincidental with this price drop. It did not cause the worldwide price of oil to drop, but anybody who was directly affected by the National Energy Program certainly felt like that's what caused it, and I can feel their pain. The drop in the price of oil in the 1980s was hard on everybody, particularly though it was hard on the oil sands. Here's why. Conventional oil is a process where you drill down and if you find the oil, it comes out of the ground. That's not the process with uh, oil sands oil. We know where it is, there's a lot of it down there, but just drilling down to it isn't enough. You either have to dig it out and put it through a plant, or you have to process it in situ. And it's much, much more expensive than the finding and the production of conventional oil. The period since 1980 has been, again, more booms and busts, uh, more realization that uh, things aren't going to grow in a linear manner, that uh, we are part, a very small part, of a large international oil industry. The price of oil goes up and down, and we don't know why. The price of natural gas goes up and down, and we don't know why. So, uh, or at least we have no control over these forces. So what has happened since 1980 is the oil industry has had to mature, it's had to learn how to roll with the punches. About the only thing I can be sure of the oil industry in the future here in Western Canada is that it will continue to be dominated by uh, forces over which we have little control. Markets, for example, um, is one of them. Uh, access to those markets through pipelines. There's always controversy around construction and operations of pipelines. Uh, we are trying now for the first time in the history of the North American oil industry to actually export large amounts of our product, oil and natural gas, overseas. But by the time the pipelines get built and the product gets to China, is there going to be some other source that's going to be cheaper? Who knows? That's the trouble with pipelines. They take a long time to build and many things can have changed by the time they are built. So in the future, we know that there will be many variables. We also know that the cheap oil and gas has already been found and it's, not, it's going to be expensive to find it and produce it and get it to markets. We know that political regimes change both here in Canada and in the United States and that always affects the development process. And we also know that technology and innovation is Clever as they are, they, they play, catch, they play catch, catch up. It's hard for them to stay ahead of the, all these other forces that are changing so quickly. The story of oil is timeless in a way. You have to find it, you have to produce it, you have to refine it or process it, and then you have to deliver it to market. That is still a challenge today, just like it was 100 years ago. So 100 years after the discovery of Western Canada's first commercial oil field in Turner Valley, southwest of Calgary, up against the mountains, the people of Alberta are still up against the same challenges. We live in a much different world today, and the petroleum industry underpins a huge part of our society, makes us all very wealthy, whether or not we realize it, and pays a lot of our taxes for us. But the challenges still remain, and in a way, as I say, the story of oil is timeless.